Hey guys, welcome to Fougere Family Ventures. Today, I'm gonna to be doing ice fishing tips for kokanee. We're gonna show you a couple different things that we've been learning and that we've been using throughout the course of this season. There's many different ways to fish for kokanee, so choose the, the way that fits best for you. And stay tuned. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. Help us promote kokanee fishing in British Columbia. That's what we're all about right now. As our family grows, as you follow our channel, you'll also see us jump into other species like lake trout and burbot and salmon and rainbows. Like we've got lots of stuff planned here, so hit that subscribe button. As we grow, you can grow with us. Okay guys, the first tip of the day here, what I've been finding that works best for me, when I get to my spot, I'm setting up my tent right away. The wind is blowing right now, the snow is blowing. I set up my tent, I actually pull my sled right into my ice tent. I've got some plans to upgrade my, my sled, so to make it easier. But for now, I just pull it in, I actually sit on a box, it works for me, whatever works for you. So number one, get yourself out of the wind, set your tent up right away. The second thing I do is I set up my body heater. I have it, I might as well use it. So I get my body heater going as quick as I can. Once it's going, it's starting to warm up the tent as we go. Most of the time, I'm coming out here onto the lake, I'm sweating a bit. I try and de-layer. I've de-layered to my t-shirt today. So I got down to my t-shirt. I want that heat to come up. I've gone to put my sweater back on now. And now we'll start to balance out the temperature in the tent. Third thing I usually like to do before I start setting everything else in, up in my tent is I drill my holes. I'm fishing for kokanee and they can be quite spooky. So I want to try and be as quiet as I can. And it's, it's very difficult when you're with kids, obviously. So you try and teach them to be quiet throughout the times that the kokanee are around. Get them excited when you catch a fish. Right now I've drilled my holes. Today I've drilled two holes. Normally I just drill one hole and I put my transducer in the hole. When I catch a fish I've been pulling it up through the hole. One thing I've heard this year and because I'm fairly new to kokanee fishing or ice fishing I should say is if that transducer is coming up around the hole you got to be mindful. It's bouncing around, hitting the ice. It's not good for the transducer. So you'll notice most people drill two holes. One for the transducer, one for your fish. So that's another tip for you. Another tip I have for you is have multiple rods. If you're fishing for kokanee, you want to be set up on different rods. Today I'm by myself, so I'm going to call them in with a bigger flasher. I've got a big William Spoon here. I have a medium William Spoon and I have a Gibbs Dogtail Dodger. I've got all three rods rigged out with mealworms right now. I might jump into different scents of corn here as we go, but we're going to see what these kokanee want. So start with three rods. If you get a really good hookup and you're by yourself, especially by yourself, and you call in some fish, you want to put that rod down and you want to get your next one in right away. whole idea with kokanee fishing is to attract them. So you're using the flasher as an attractor. They come in, they're very curious, and if you have your line out of the water, the, the school's just going to swim away. So get your second rod in the water right away. Okay, let's talk leader lengths. Most people have a short leader length. Today, I'm fishing with the shorter leader length. This was successful the other day. I just left it on. I might have to go longer on my leader length if the kokanee are more finicky, or I might have to even shorten it up because sometimes they come right up to your flasher. So play with your leader lengths, but not so much. The two things that you should probably start with when you're kokanee fishing, choose a, a leader length that works for you, choose a spoon size. I like the heavier spoons a lot of the time just because they go down quicker if you're going fishing deep. And choose a spoon, stick with that spoon, focus more on your baits. You want to have a variety of baits when you're kokanee fishing so if they're not after one bait you can quickly switch to another. Okay so we're all set up here. Body heaters going, the tent's starting to warm up here, my, dr my holes are drilled, they're nice and clean, the fish finder's on, as I was sitting here waiting, I did notice one kokanee swim by at 20 feet and one kokanee swim by at 10. There was an, also an active kokanee that went from 10 down to 20. So I know they're within that range. So what I need to do is I need to find out where most of the fish are. Now today, I had enough time. I've come out for the afternoon bite. The afternoon bite on this lake is somewhere between 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So I knew I had to get here before the bite started. I'm looking at my fish finder right now. I can tell you the time right now is 1.10 p.m. So there are two fish around. I'm going to see if I can call more in. And then we'll go from there. Hopefully I can hit this bite. And I've got my rod set up. 
and I should be able to get a couple fish within the next couple hours. So here we go. I'm going to drop my line down. We're going to see if we can call some fish in right away on my fish finder. Big spoon, got my pink jig, and I got my mealworm. Usually I'll start out with a full mealworm. If the fish are getting really picky, I'll cut it down to a half a mealworm. Now, I can watch my fish finder, and I can watch this flasher drop all the way down. I can actually see this on my screen. So if you have a fish finder, there's a very important way that you can get set up. Now I had a fish come in right away to this flasher. First drop of the day, and I already have a fish on me right now. Picture your fish finder as a cone. Your fish finder will send a cone down on both sides of your hole. So I'm looking down that hole with my fish finder, and it's spread out. Just because you don't see any fish on your fish finder doesn't mean that they're around. They're not around. So we know these fish are around. We're not quite sure what exact depth most of them are at. So right now, because we haven't seen any on our fish finder, I'm going to do great big sweeping jigs like this. I'm going to lightly let it let it go down. My flasher's going to flash. It's going to send out a sound. And those kokanee are actually going to hear that. They're going to come in to investigate to see what's going on in the area. So I want to pay extreme attention to that fish finder. That is a key when you're kokanee fishing and especially when you have a finder. If you do not have a fish finder, you want to do big jigs, but every now and then you want to start to go to smaller jigs. You'll notice when I am doing my bigger jigs, I sweep up, I'm letting it go, my line is slack. At the end, watch my rod tip. My rod tip actually bounces. So I'm sweeping up, I'm letting it go, and it's going to hit the end and it's going to bounce. Don't be fooled, that's not a fish hitting your line, that's just your dodger just kind of settling itself out or your flasher settling out. So big sweeping jigs, let it go, and you'll see my rod tip bounce a bit. So don't get too excited right away. So I've been at 20 feet for quite a while now. I do know that on this lake, the afternoon bite, usually the fish are right up on the surface. So really, having a fish finder is not going to help me. I need to be anywhere from 10 feet to right below the ice. So I'm going to reel up 5 feet. I'm going to go to 15, then I'm going to go to 10, and I'm going to see where those fish are at. Maybe I can call them in and I can get them on my finder. So when you're jigging, you want to keep a nice steady jig. You can vary that jig, but most importantly, you also need to make sure that you're pausing at the end. Let your, let your presentation settle itself out. If there's a fish in the area, he'll usually come and hit it. Sometimes they'll hit it when it's going down. Sometimes you can reel up, and they'll hit it when it's coming up. So the most important thing, though, when you're jigging, you want to jig, and you want to make sure you're pausing a little bit. Give it about three to five seconds and pauses. Now, you can catch a fish if you're doing this, or if you're doing little quick jigs. You can catch a fish, but the chances that are that are a little bit more unpredictable. They will smash something. They will come up and hit a jig when it's going really quickly. But for the most part, you're going to scare them away. You're calling them in. They hear it. They come in to investigate, and it's bouncing around like crazy. They don't want nothing to do with it, so they will take off. But if you can jig a bit and pause, that's when they'll usually bite. So I've worked my way from 20 to 15 to 10. Now I'm at 5. This is the best time to take kids out and take them kokanee fishing. You can look right down your hole. You can see these fish. You black out your tent. You take a look. And there's usually a school moving through when they come around. And it's a blast. Right now I haven't marked any. So I will start playing with the depths. Okay, so I finally called one of these kokanee in. He's on me right now. So now I'm going to do little jigs. I'm going to pause a bit. I'm going to try and keep them around. Hopefully I can keep them around. I can see the difference between my flasher and my jig and the kokanee on my screen. I'm just going to take little tiny jigs here. So he's still on me. So now that I know he's there, he's not taken off, I'm going to do little jigs. If this doesn't work and he takes off, I'm quickly going to reel in. I might put some garlic corn or something a little bit more aggressive. I've got another fish coming back up to me at 20 feet, so I'm going to keep doing this. Now if you want to try and feel a direct connection to the fish, a few things you can do. Have a stiffer rod. 
Usually a stiffer rod in the winter time when you're kokanee fishing, it helps detect those bites. I'm using a medium action, I think it's a Berkeley Lightning right now. You can try braided line. I've tried braided line, I'm not a big fan of it myself so far. It's tangling up around my swivels when I jig. I use 10 pound Maxima Ultra Green. I still got that fish on me right now. So I'm just going to jig a little bit here. I've also got, if you can see, I've got my finger on my line here. So I can kind of try and detect the bites as well. And what you should also be doing is looking down the end of your rod and watching your rod tip. Because you're going to get that little bump. He's going to just, just tap it. So he's not really liking it, but he's staying around. So I'm not going to take my rod out of the water. If there was more than one of me fishing in the tent, or if I had somebody else fishing, I would have somebody reel up, change baits, and see if that makes a difference. By me pulling my flasher out of the water, I could actually spook him off, and I could have to sit here and wait for the next school to come around. So basically, you want to make sure that you keep them in the area as long as you can. Groups of two to four are usually pretty good. I've seen people have a little square of people, and that usually keeps the kokanee in the area a lot longer than most. So he's still there, but he just doesn't like it. So that tells me the mealworm is just not enough. Maybe, maybe my leader length is too long. But like I said earlier, I'm going to focus on the bait first. I know that I can keep them around with what I have. So I'm going to change my bait up here. Once this guy takes off, I'm going to quickly reel in, put a garlic piece of corn on, see if that works. I've got anise, I've got shrimp, I've got prawn scent, I've got just about every type of scent I, I can have here. I've got garlic, just pure garlic. And we're going to see if that works, if I can stimulate them to bite. kind of taken off right now so I'm going to get my bait ready I did not rig up another rod with a different scent and that might be an idea for you if you've got more than one rod you can rig up a few different scents and take it out and put one back in so that could be somewhere you could start if you're fishing by yourself if you're fishing with more than one person each person start with a different type of bait and then you can zone in on what those fish want for that particular day okay so instead of taking my mealworm off I quickly ripped a half a piece off I grab some of my Procure garlic and I just put it on my jig. This stuff is pretty potent and hopefully this helps trigger a bite. So I just had another fish come in here, no interest whatsoever. Kind of came up, took a look and he took off. What I'm going to do, I've tried two different baits already. I'm going to lengthen my leader. Now I don't have two of the same spoons on, so I'm just going to go to a different flasher for now. Today it's the Gibbs Dogtail. The Dogtail has been working really well for ice fishing for me this year. So I'm going to quickly switch up. He's taken off. I'm going to switch up and see if I can't convince him to come in and bite. Put this down. I'll grab my other one with a longer leader and I'm going to quickly put it down. So you're only allowed to fish with one rod. But if you have a couple different rods all rigged up, you'll be a little bit quicker in the process. Now another ice fishing tip for kokanee is to play with them. We've talked about searching the water column, lifting your gear up as you go. But if you see a fish at 30 feet and he comes up to 20 and he's kind of playing with you, play with him. Drop it down to 30. Right now I'm going to drop it all the way down to 30. They will turn around and chase your splasher down. Drop it down to 30. Those aggressive kokanee... Sometimes they'll actually come down and smack your gear on the way down. If he comes down, he chases it, and he misses it, reel up. Play with him. Reel all the way up. Stop. And if he follows it, reel up some more. Those aggressive kokanee will chase your gear and smack it because they are curious, and they are territorial, and they don't want that in the area.